Hey guys, Dana here, back again. So soon, what's going on? I don't know. Uh, had some spare time on my hands, so I thought um, after watching yesterday's video, uploading yesterday's video, making yesterday's video, I thought that I would um, show the room because I don't think I've ever, ever over the last five years shown the room. <clears throat> and there was a few reasons for that. A, it's quite small, not much of a room to show, everything's sort of crammed in. I'm not sure whether you sort of get that impression. Uh, from the videos, I know a few people have commented over the years um, when they've actually seen the, the room in real life or I've sort of talked about the room thinking, oh, I thought that was a dedicated room or I thought that was a massive room, judging by the way the video looks, but no, it's not, as you'll soon see. So, yeah, I've decided to do a short video uh, just to go around the room, um, so sort of briefly cover the collection uh, and my hi-fi equipment and just basically the setup that I've got here. Um, yeah, so... We'll uh, head over to that now, and uh, yeah, I'll uh, see you shortly. Right, as we come into the room, this is our main living room, listening area where I do the videos. So as you're coming into the room, the first thing you'll see is the DVDs, Blu-rays, etc. And the cat, if she feels so inclined, um, all the box six, etc., and so forth up there. As I said, I'm a big film fan, even though historically on my videos I don't actually show that many soundtracks. As you'll see in a second, I do have a fair few. Um, so just going around the room, so this is the view that most of you will be familiar with from the videos. So just quickly go through what we've got up here. Again, at the top, due to lack of space, we have box sets. So the first half of that is vinyl box sets up until there. Um, it's the Disney Reader's Digest box set and Godzilla um, Blu-ray set. And then from here on, these are all laser discs. So laser disc Disney box sets, as you can see, Star Wars, etc., and some. Uh, for those in the know, some use high definition discs. And then we come down. So everything in this row essentially is Iron Maiden. Uh, so I've basically got all the 12 inches picture discs and so forth in that cube. Uh, those are all the albums up until Fear of the Dark. As you can see, some duplications. And again, you'll have seen already some of these in my spotlight videos. Um, I think Power Slave was the last one I did, so we need to do uh, Live After Death. Um, so you see there's four copies there. There's some more in the box set on the end. Um, albums from Donington Live uh, through to Present Day, which is the last um, Nights of the Dead um, gig that they did from Mexico. And then we've got the box sets. So we've got the Best of the Beast, the Picture Disc box set, the 2014 um, re-releases, uh, and then the re-release, I can't remember which year they were after that, 2017, I want to say. Uh, and then we've got some Eye Maiden laser discs there as well. And then we come down. Um, so the collection is generally just alphabetized by artist. Um, A's. Bs, etc. So as you can see, we're going through um, across and then down. So we've got Def Leppard there, or the Doors album, which I showed the other day, um, and the production and so forth. So basically, all those. So that sort of brings us down all the way down to the bottom. Uh, that section there all looks very similar as all the Paul McCartney Archive collection stuff. Um, apologies for the odd camera angle here, it's pretty tight in this area. As you can see, because we've now got... Let's move out the doorway. Another two before here, so this is where I did the video yesterday. So again, just following on, so we've got ours, we've got a few... Um, Couple of Ramstein, um, 
albums here, Joe Satriani, some Slayer, um, so this is all the end of the T's and the U's, um, so all the Weezer, MoFi stuff in there, and then the White Stripes within Temptation stuff through, through to ZZ Top. Um, in the bottom cube there, not great lighting here, is the Jazz Collection, again as I was talking about uh, in the last video. Um, so that's grown quite a bit, so there's a few Tone Poets etc in there. Um, and then, basically, at the beginning of here, so we have the Soundtrack uh, Cubes. So essentially all the stuff at the start here is the data disc now I did have I started collecting all the data disc stuff um and as you can see sort of room is a premium here uh premium office space as I like to say um so I had to cut back some of those so I've just basically kept the ones that I'm really really interested in um but going through so we've just got up to C's here um and then the rest of the collection through and through into here so basically that uh, goes up to, and I think I've shown the thing before anyway, all the Twin Peaks stuff, and then we get into a few different compilations, and then there's a little Christmas sort of section there. Um, so as I said, there's quite a few, it's essentially three cubes there, or two and a half cubes of soundtracks, there's quite a few soundtracks really. I've got a few more as well just to clean and get through. Uh, here are my um, seven inch collection so uh and again i've got more as you'll see in a second uh, so this essentially is just all the iron maiden stuff that i wanted to pull out um so we've basically got everything in covers and everything is clean so as you can see there's sort of multiple versions of stuff in there um these would be different pressings with different labels from different countries potentially so we've got the u.s capital press in there the US Capital Promo pressing. And we've got the Japanese promo as well there. Um, so I've got quite a few <laughs> maiden seven inches. Still haven't got a complete UK um, set yet, although I'm getting there. I've got uh, most, if not all, of the Japanese by the promo ones, I think. And the two minutes to midnight. Although potentially they're all promo, really, in, in theory. Um, don't have... Um, Soundhouse tapes, annoyingly. I used to have it back in the day and then got rid of it with all my vinyl. Um, picked that up the other day, actually. That was quite a nice little find. Um, ASAP, Adrian Smith's project. Silver and gold promo. Um, so that's quite a nice. I think I paid a fiver for it, which you know, isn't much. This is just all the Iron Maiden related stuff. So the Samson, um, all the solo stuff, etc. And then we've got um, all the other bits and bobs essentially that I've pulled out of here. So I think as I mentioned uh, again in my last video, this is traditionally where all those seven inches were housed. They are sort of now housed, um, the, rem the remnants of which are still in here. So there's just a mixture of different things in here that just need to go through. Um, recently acquired uh, a large punk collection so there's sort of those sort of in there. Um, I'm not a massive punk fan, so a lot of this I've sort of already sold on eBay. Uh, still got a few bits and bobs left. Um, so I just need to go through that. And again, just see if there's anything that needs to sort of come out and stay in the collection. I did pick up a couple. Um, but yeah, the rest of it's just, you know, most of it's alphabetized. You know, so I just need to go through and say, do I really need this? In my collection, um, yeah, that's a Dire Straits um, RSD thing from a couple of years ago. Actually, that's staying. I just need to. Um, I don't know why it's so difficult for people one-handed to do anything. Um, yeah, this is staying. It just needs cleaning, basically. So this is the Charlie Gillett's um, sessions from a few years back. Um, so yeah, so that's basically the record side of things. Um, so this unit used to be where that unit is there. Um, so we spun it round in the new year. Um, it was only about three and a half cubes full. As you can see, it's now full. 
um, so we do need some more space. The idea is to sort of move that um, somewhere else once I've taken the seven inches out and utilise that space just to probably put another single one here, but vertically. That's the plan at least. Um, so yeah, so coming over to the hi-fi, so speaker-wise, I've got some, well, it's basically an AV setup, so I've got the Kev R-series, with the old R-series. Um, I think these main speakers are R500s from memory. Um, sound really good. I used to have old Kev speakers as well. They were really, really nice. And on the rears, obviously, I've got the two R100s, I want to say they are. Um, and I've got a little Kev center speaker. And then the sub at the bottom there. Uh, so turntable wise, I have the Project Debut Carbon. Um, so I've had this pretty much since 2015, which is when I got back into vinyl. Um, it has a replacement, um, came with the 2M Red, and essentially I've just replaced the the stylus portion, so essentially it slides off and on with the 2M Blue, so it's not the whole cartridge, it still has the cartridge base for the head shell or whatever you call it from the Red. Um, upgraded the platter quite early doors on it um so we've now got the acrylic platter and if i can lift this off excuse me without having to put the camera down you can also see i've upgraded the sub platter to the aluminium one there as well um that has made i think in combination with the acrylic platter it's made a big difference um and the center hole again. Um, it just isolates everything a lot better. You're not getting any feedback back into this, the stylus. And obviously it's on a live isolation platform, as you can see. Um, turntable goes into a Project Phono Box S. Um, does the job. Um, I used to have the cheaper version of that uh, and it failed on me, so ended up swapping it out. Um, the other stuff is sort of AV related, so um, there's the laser display at the bottom with Cristalio 2 essentially, which is um, basically laser discs are feeding into that, it's a comb filter essentially to all intents and purposes. Uh, on top of that is the uh, high vision stuff, so that was the HD laser disc I um, spoke about earlier in the video on the top of the, uh, the unit there. Um, Lumigen, which essentially upscales the uh, video coming out of the laser disc player into 1080p. Um, and then there's an RFD modulator. Essentially, the way laser disc works is it's encoded. Um, AC3, Dolby Digital. Um, and that little box decodes it essentially into something that the newer amps recognise. Uh, so coming round to the bottom, so this is the AV amp. Um, so it's just a Denon uh, AVR2200, I think. So I've had that quite a while, actually. I used to have an old Sony, and it sort of gave up, so I ended up getting this at the time. But this is probably a touch older than the, um, the uh, turntable. Um, but I don't use that for the turntable. Basically, what I use is the Musical Fidelity B1. So I used to have this back in the day when uh, I had my old hi-fi setup and I sourced one off eBay um, and basically got it recapped, serviced etc by a guy down south who specialises in um, dealing with this sort of equipment so he literally only works on a handful of amplifiers and this was one of them. Um, I think he does uh, the um, uh, Cyrus amps, uh, Musical Fidelity, um, NAD and something else. Um, yeah, sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, in an ideal uh, world, I basically want to use the Phono stage on this. I'm not sure. Well, I need to compare how the Phono stage on this compares to the Project Phono stage. Um, just because I don't really want to run long cables at the moment from there around to here. So I'm not doing that at the moment. And then on top of that, basically sort of hidden away, so prime fingers can't swap it around, is my speaker selection or amplifier uh, selection box from Beresford. So essentially the cables from both um, speaker outlets go into that box from the amplifiers 
and I select which amplifier I want. So as you can see, it's on A at the moment, which is for the AV amp. Um, I'm going to switch it over to B um, when I want to use the musical fidelity. And as you can see, there's only one set of speakers on there, but obviously I can put two or buy wire the speakers up if necessary, um, which I was thinking about doing actually, because uh, the speakers are buy wireable. Again, but I don't know if there's any major difference in that um, through that setup. Um, and here we've got a few select laser discs. Yeah, sorry about that. It looks like I uh, hit the uh, stop button by accident. Um, anyway, yeah, so down here we've got a collection of laser discs. So again, it's these are the key ones that I picked out. So these like the Star Wars, so like the original cuts, etc. Um, and some other bits and bobs as well that I just wanted to keep hold of. The rest of the collection, I'd say they've got quite a few laser discs actually again, which like records I need to start thinning through due to um, do I really need them, storage, etc. Um, yeah, they need to go. And then the rest uh, of the room essentially is, is made up of uh, books. Um, so yeah, myself and my partner both like to read, not that I do much reading anyway. Um, but yeah, I put these shelves in when we first moved in. Um, yeah, work quite well. Although well, they do need a good dust and rewax again. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it as we stand at the moment. Um, so yeah, uh, ideally, uh, like I say, in a ideal world, this um, collection would be in a dedicated room, which we did plan on having uh, done by now. So the, the, we were about to sort of kickstart that project off at the beginning of last year, then COVID hit, um, which obviously has uh, scuppered those plans. Uh, so hopefully we may get to restart that project again later on this year, once sort of we go back into some sort of normality. Um, otherwise it's obviously going to be um, next year. Um, but yeah, for the time being, like I say, it's a living room, music room, TV room, storage room at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little cosy room. It sounds nice as well, actually, in here. Um, but yeah, hopefully one day in the not too distant future, we'll get a, a dedicated room and then, uh, yeah, the, uh, better half will be, uh, much happier. I'm sure she will. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching guys. And, uh, back to me in the studio as the same. And we're back in the studio, as they say. Um, should maybe put a little Scooby Doo interlude here. Um, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, so that was the room tour. Uh, in the last video as well, I mentioned something uh, around the sort of analog um, releases that are coming out and the pricing around those. I never actually then got to uh, revisit that by the end of the video. Uh, so I'll tag that on here. So basically all I was alluding to there was there seems to be, um, I wouldn't say it's a new culture because it's been around for a while now, especially with RSD um, in the whole sort of flipping side of things. Um, and I've sort of seen that it's certainly more prevalent outside of RSD in the audio file market. So people essentially, uh, so Certainly if you look at uh, mobile fidelity, uh, potentially the, the, the biggest market to look at. Uh, and we've had others recently, more of note craft recordings, which I know a lot of people have sort of uh, made comments around. Certainly the, the initial small batch uh, one steps that um, they did. Uh, I think John Coltrane was the first one, which I think they did 300 of. Uh, and there was a massive um, was it 300 or 1,000? Sorry, 1,000, I think. Okay, I should have checked my facts here. I'm sure it's a 1,000 anyway. Yes, it was a 1,000. Um, sold out straight away. Uh, John Coltrane's Lush Life. It was a very nice package. I think it was about $80, $100, £80, pounds, I think it equated to over here anyway. Um, I didn't find out um, until after the fact about that anyway. Otherwise, I probably would have grabbed a hold of it. Um, but then there was a Youssef Latif um, album that they announced was the second one, again for a thousand, but then the, for whatever reason they decided to release a batch of those up front early to subscribers. Um, I think it was, again, it was just a massive headache to try and get hold of that and obviously sold out within seconds. 
The annoying thing on that is they haven't been sold to people that are interested in the music. They all appeared on eBay, you know, within half an hour of them being sold out. And we've seen this before. <clears throat> so as you've seen from the, the video that I showed, you just watched, the data discs, for instance, in this sort of portion down here, um, that company specializes in video game soundtracks. And initially the first couple of releases sort of sold out and the fans got hold of those. And obviously then flippers found out that they could potentially make a bit of money on these. They tend to do like a limited run, a standard color release and then a standard black release. So the limited runs obviously sell out quicker because those are the ones that the fans want because they're quite cool. Uh, they go to a lot of effort. But the way, the way their system works was that you subscribe to their mailing list. They send you a link to get into the store on the day of release. Um, but they do that in three different sessions. So if you're in the UK or the US or other, then they open that up um, within three sessions and then it goes into a general release. So everybody sort of gets their chance to get hold of a copy, which is quite nice. But again, after the first few um, releases of those, they were then appearing on eBay. Uh, Data Discs were pretty good actually about this, so they were cancelling orders. Um, they were trying to track people's orders essentially, so if your order then subsequently appeared on eBay, they would just cancel that order. So obviously if the name matches, location, etc, then, you know. So they were pretty proactive about it. Nobody else I've seen has actually gone down to that much effort to sort of try and eradicate this issue. Uh, going back to Mobile Fidelity. So again, Mobile Fidelity generally have a limited run on their items. Um, so obviously you mentioned the one step for craft, so they do one step. Um, and they're limiting their one steps to X number of thousands. Um, and obviously the flippers have seen that, you know, if they fork out $125, which you know may seem a lot to a lot of people for a record, they'll immediately flip that on eBay before they even have it in hand, at a minimum of double the price. Uh, and for some reason, people are paying this sort of money and even beyond that. And it's the same for their standard releases as well. So the standard numbered stuff, uh, more recent thing I can think about is Bob Dylan. A lot of his stuff sold out pretty quickly on, online through the MoFi store. But it's all on eBay. You know, you've seen it on eBay for flipped prices. And it's, it's an annoying part of the sort of vinyl record collecting market. And it always has been. And we've seen it in RSD where it's been highlighted that, you know, you, you queue up outside the record store up until obviously the last couple of years. You miss out on that one title, you get home, you know, disgruntled and then you go on eBay and your day is even worse because you see, you know, a dozen or so copies plus uh, inflated prices. And you think, do I just buy it for one of these flippers or do I just hold out and hope that I find it one day? So it is annoying, but it's more annoying the fact that it's now creeping into the general sort of market. And I alluded to that on the Tone Poet stuff. So like the Chet Baker and the Chick Career were, I think, two early releases. They sold out very quickly on their initial runs. So obviously you couldn't go into the store, you couldn't order them from the Blue Note store and buy them. So the eBay market was just, you know, people were obviously just flipping their records thinking, well, it's still in print. I know I can sell this for a profit, so I'm going to do that. And, you know, fair enough, maybe, you know, if you bought a record and then you, you know, you instantly see that you could sell that $30 record for $100 on eBay, I suppose the morality questions start coming in. Do I do that or do I just keep hold of the record? Because I've hopefully bought that record for the reason of listening to the music, not for making money. I appreciate we live in a world now where, you know, capitalism, uh, you know, it's everybody's right to buy something and make some you know some money off that if so desired but yeah I've seen artists come out now as well there was an artist on Twitter that I saw the other day that essentially was trying to shut down somebody that essentially had bought her albums through Bandcamp and were then trying to flip them on Discogs for inflated prices and she sort of said to him end of the day if you want to buy my album great but you buy it to listen to you don't buy it to stop other people that can't get hold of it then have to play inflated prices for it. So it's one of these things that's just going to go round and round and round. Um, and people do it in other walks of life. Trainers, for instance, is, is you know a big market, a big resale market. 
the flippers. Um, I suppose it's anything that anybody is willing to pay money for. You know, that's the area that we're are that we're all in now. Um, and as a lot of people have said, I suppose the the moral of the story is if you really want to record and it's limited in any shape or form, buy it. You know, if you've got the means to, don't sit on it, just buy it. And a lot of people have said that and I've sort of taken heed of that now, um, which is a bit annoying because you, you, you do think that hopefully you'll have a bit of time to try and um, sort of rather than buying everything all at once, you know, sort of gauge your buying so you've got time to sort of listen to stuff as well. Um, and that sort of goes back to the fact that, you know, I'm still cleaning records that I bought four years ago and it's it's getting to that point now where, you, you know, as soon as something is released and release schedules are moving quicker and quicker now, and we're sort of, you know, getting over the COVID backlogs and things are coming out thick and fast and it's like difficult to keep up with the stuff that you want, the stuff that you need. Um, but yeah, that's, I suppose, at the end of the day, if you really want that record, you buy it when it comes out. And then you know you take the hit later on because otherwise if it does go out of print full stop or it just goes out of print waiting for a repress and you still want that record then essentially you're going to pay through the nose for it sadly but yeah anyway enough of me waffling second video um for 2021 two videos in two days you lucky boys and girls are treated um i will do another video whether it'll be tomorrow or not i don't know Probably won't be, trust me. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd get this out there while I'm in the mood to do a video. I've got the house to myself. Um, yeah. So that's it. So um, no records as such today, but hopefully you enjoyed the little mini room tour. And um, yeah, we'll be back potentially with an Iron Maiden um, next spotlight, hopefully. Thanks, guys. Um, thanks for the comments from yesterday's video. Um, good to see people are still out there interested in watching me um, waffle on um, about inane stuff. Um, but yeah, great stuff. Thanks, guys, and uh, see you again soon. Cheers.